Welcome everyone. My name is Kenza Amara. I am a doctorate fellow at the ETH AI Center and also a PhD in computer science at ETH University. My main advisor is Professor Su Zhang from the Systems Group at ETH. And um, my research topic is explainability for graph neural networks. And I'm also interested in two applications in finance, banking, the e-commerce, health, and for environmental issues. Um, more generally, I'm interested in research topics related uh, to explainable AI, deep learning and graphs, uh, network analysis, graph theory, and reinforcement learning. So today I'm happy to introduce you to the topic of explainability for graph neural networks and uh, to show you how important it is, uh, especially in finance. So the data collected by institu uh, financial institu institutions has a topological structure that makes it easy to represent as a graph, uh, such as uh, financial networks, payment networks, recommendation systems. And um, given this graph structure and node features, graph node networks, or GNNs, is a powerful tool to do predictions on the nodes or the whole graph. Uh, for instance, we, use it, we usually use graph node network for fraud detection or account matching. To increase our control over these uh, financial systems, but also trustworthiness and accountability uh, of these algorithms, uh, it has become essential to provide stakeholders with understandable explanations uh, of the logic and the predicted outcomes of the graph neural network. So a good explanation is a subset of edges, nodes, and node features uh, that uh, contribute the most to the information flow that leads to the predicted outcomes of the model. However, due to the complex data representation and the nonlinear transformation, explaining decisions made by uh, GNNs is challenging. Today, there exist plenty of methods. I present you here a taxonomy. So we first distinguish intrinsic explanations from post hoc explanations. The intrinsic explanations are produced for models that are self-understandable. For instance, linear regression models can be understood by the estimated coefficients, decision trees or decision rules by nodes, splits, or the, the if-else rules. Uh, but on the other hand, you have post hoc explanations that are produced by an external method that we call uh, the explainer or the explainability method uh, once the graph neural network has been trained. Uh, and among those post hoc explanations, you have model aware explainability methods that look inside the model to extract information. Uh, so they analyze the inner parameters of the model, such as the gradients or the feature activation maps. And you also have the model agnostic explainability methods that consider the model as a black box and infer the importance of graph entities uh, by slightly perturbing the input and looking at, at the changes in the output. So I quickly show you here uh, that there are actually many explainability methods available for graph neural networks. And uh, you can see here how I classify them into different categories based on their procedure. Uh, so now, how to explain a graph neural network? Uh, you have to do some choices prior to uh, the explanation, uh, such as choosing uh, the focus of your explanation, the nature of your explanation, and if you want to apply a transformation, which type of transformation you will apply. And then you have some uh, different criteria to evaluate uh, the explanation after it has been produced such as uh, what type of explanation uh, you returned and some other properties like how selective, confident, or discriminative it is, etc. Uh, because of the profusion of explainability methods for GNNs, I, uh, I am currently building a comparative framework. So for each method, I follow the same protocol. I start by training uh, the GNN. Once trained, I run my explainability method that generates a mask on the input graph 
by minimizing a certain loss function. So the objective is to reproduce at best the initial prediction. Uh, eventually, I apply a mask transformation. And the final explanation is evaluated using the fidelity measure. The evaluation allows you to classify uh, your explanation into uh, three different types. Either it's causal, if it's sufficient but not necessary to the prediction, or counterfactual, if it's necessary but not sufficient, and it is a characterization of your prediction if it's both necessary and sufficient. Uh, so uh, I focused on not classification and compared input level explainability methods, and the results for real world data sets are very informative. And they can all be summarized into a comparative table where each method is uh, evaluated on multiple criteria, such as the computation time for generating a mask, uh, its characterization power, and um, other, multiple, uh, other criteria, like, as I said, being selective, discriminative, confident, and Should also the ranking ability. I thank you very much for your attention and open the floor for questions. <laughs> Last time I measured, that was a very fast minute. <laughs> uh, we have time for some uh, uh, questions for, uh, for Kenza. Yes, ma'am. Can you repeat that uh, question? Um, does your protocol applies to all other types of machine learning Models or only GNN? Uh, so the protocol can be applied to any neural networks. Actually, you can also choose the type of GNN you want to apply it for. And you can check if changing the GNN will actually change the explanation. Uh, and some people want it to be uh, robust to changes into the model. And other wants the GNN to be very specific to a certain type of, uh, yeah, of model. So yes. Any other questions? I have a quick question. So if I wanted to play with uh, play with this tool, is it available? Not yet. But Not yeah, yet. OK, so we're, we'll be uh, uh, waiting for it. So uh, thanks again, Kenza. Thank you.